Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is February 21st of 2019. I think this is going to be a brief video. I'm going to try to keep my... Uh, I made a video yesterday that I just removed. I made a video yesterday that was uh, 40 minutes in length, and I thought it was a pretty good one. But uh, 15 minutes into the video, I on the screen here moved around to show you uh, a install or application that would supposedly improve the for $15 well you could do it for free for 30 days for $15 improve your headphone audio now I went over to show you the uh, not the application, but where it was listed. Anyway, I didn't change anything, but I, what I did not know is that when I just went over there, Windows 10 changed something, even though I hadn't changed anything, and I didn't have any more audio for, so I made, I finished the, I hate that, you know, if you watch my videos, you know, oh, that pisses me off, because I'm lazy. And, uh, so anyway, I went ahead and I put on the like the title, you know, at 15 minutes, you know, the, uh, no audio for the rest of the, and I put underneath it uh, on the thing and uploaded it in case somebody just wanted to watch 15 minutes and then so they wouldn't wait around thinking that after that, that and I uploaded it and uh, then I actually took the video and that uh, the, you know that I hadn't that I had uploaded, but I had it here, and decided, okay, well, I'll just do talk over from 15 minutes on to the last. And I had problems with that because then when I was trying it in the editor, the video wasn't moving; it was just stopped at 15 minutes. And I was recording, but I couldn't see, didn't know what I was saying. And I had to mess with that, and then I figured out a way to do that. And then I had—I thought I had some pretty good, uh, that was, sometimes I think I'm pretty funny and cute. And so I was then talking about making fun of myself. I had a video down here of live, and then up here on the side it was uh, the video that, you know, and then over here I had my, you know, this browser or whatever, and then I was talking like, you know, like the other me was, I was saying, man, look at that stupid, look at him waving his hands, I'm just, I thought, I thought it's just kind of cute. And I got done, okay, I thought, okay, well, I didn't remember everything, I couldn't tell what I was talking about in that, but uh, I put in some stuff that's kind of cute, kind of funny. And uh, then I, I forget exactly how the, how I did it because there's two or three go, two or three things going on at the same time. I didn't save it. I thought that it went to a folder and I would be now it might still be on my computer someplace. I couldn't find it. So so I just made a video a while ago and when I made that video and uploaded it and it was a short video about these containers that I got in big containers I got in I think it's only like eight minute video maybe but at that time I went ahead and then I deleted that video from yesterday so if you happen to watch that video yesterday you are one of the 10 or 15 people that got to see that video I can't even bring it back I could you know do what, like uh, the lost videos of uh, Howard's Notebook or something like that. Can't do that. Well, could do that, but not going to do that. So, I'm rambling. Um, hang on a second.
if you watch my videos, you'll know that I'm kind of proud of myself. For I don't know how many years, I know I, I got married at age 26, and when I, I could not swallow pills, and I'm not sure at what point I was able to, you know, I'd go to the doctor and the doctor would prescribe something and I'd say, can you make it in liquid? Can, it, can, I, can, make it, can I grind it up? Can I, you know? A few times I went to the pharmacy and they'd say, you know, like it would be in liquid form or something like that. And the farmers would say, is this prescription for a kid? No, it's for me. Uh, when I was little, I talked about this before. Uh, my mother and the landlady where we lived when I was five years old, I had to take some medicine and uh, the landlady was a, a large lady. You know, my mother and the fat landlady, nice, nice, nice lady, by the way. Uh, the only person I know of who she, many, many years later, I was a grown man, uh, she died of uh, lockjaw. And not many people die because everybody, you know, if you go to your doctor or whatever, your doctor is going to say, if you had your tetanus shot, if you go to the hospital emergency room or something like that, they're going to ask certain questions. And one of them is going to be, have you had a tetanus shot? You know, and uh, you're going to get one. And so it's just rare for anybody to ever die from uh, lockjaw, but she did. Uh, Mrs. Hannah, and she uh, rented out rooms in her house, and for a year, when I was going to kindergarten, my parents and I had just come back from California, where my parents worked in the building Liberty Ships at the Kaiser Shipyards for World War II, and uh, so we lived there when I was in kindergarten. And I keep, sometimes I'll say uh, in a video that I never went to uh, public school for elementary or grade school. That, that's a mistake. Went to Horseman in Kansas City, Missouri, Horseman Kindergarten for one year when I was five. And then my parents bought a house. And then after that, I went to, you know, Holy Name grade school. And then I went to St. Vincent's grade school. Then I went to De La Salle Military Academy, Christian Brothers High School and a military school. And so I did go to, but, uh, okay, how did I get on that subject? I have no idea. So anyway, I uh, I got in and I made that video, I think this morning. Yeah, because they came today. It's not midnight yet. And uh, I talked about it in that video. If you watched that video, I mentioned that when I got it, there was a rattle. Well, the top one had actually a piece broken out of it. No big deal. It, it's fine. It works. Not a problem. But I mentioned, I believe, in the video that when I uh, bought, or when I went to Amazon to find these large containers so I can try to organize my room here a little bit, that one of them is going to be right over here. You see this vacant space on the floor down there? They're gonna, I'm going to start stacking them up there. And, and hopefully get some of this stuff put away because if, if you watch my videos also you know oh my god if, every time I want to find something I have to move everything usually put it on my bed then I find the thing sometimes and then I have to move everything off my bed someplace and so I'm going to try to get organized um, so oh yeah I wanted to mention that um on that container, when I bought them, or when I went to Amazon, uh, I didn't go, they have like hundreds or thousands of reviews. 
but there was only like eight, I think, at the bottom. Then I could have I could have clicked for more. And uh, the four, there was six. And that was it. The four top ones, people gave it a rating of, of one, one star, and said that the things came smashed. That they were thin plastic and they were just smashed when shipping. And then those were reviews that were 2017. And then under that was two reviews that were 2018. And those people gave it five star, you know, five stars, said it came in excellent condition and it was strong, good plastic or whatever. So I'm figuring that, uh, you know, that maybe the company at the beginning had some problems, but it looks like they, you know, so I ordered them and I'm perfectly happy with them. I got four of them for $63 or something like that. Um, but when it came, and I mentioned that in the video, I, I, I could hear a rattling. And then I finally saw, also, if you've been watching my videos, you know that uh, I really love this. I installed on a, a tripod that I ordered, then I installed the, a floating head on it and so easy to adjust except I have to tighten it down if I go up or down with it because it'll start <laughs> slowly um, so um, rambling again um, oh so if you watched my videos I'm saying that a lot this time you will know that I'm not allowed to uh, review anything on Amazon. I am blacklisted. Uh, so I actually uh, sent the company an email to their corporation address and, uh, to help them out. That's what I tried to do with, and I had, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds, I'm not sure many, every one of the Amazon reviews that I did, I always included video and I always uh, you know tried to be constructive but anyway I was blacklisted anyway I contacted the company and I think the problem they may be having now is on these containers there's four in the bottom giant giant box four in there and the uh, top one, they put the lid on it and they clamp the lid down. And then the other three lids, because they're nestled in each other, you know, like the Russian bears or what is it that come, you know. And then on top they lay the other three. And right where the break was, you know, was where the latches, and I think that one being latched down on the side torque or uh, whatever I think that probably would cause the break and maybe they're having other breaks on the other hand there's always a possibility they were having problems with the shipping and they and they might have found that the best thing to do was to uh, put that lid on that one and latch it down to keep the torque or whatever you'd call it from so anyway but it's just too bad that Amazon, I know why they did it. You know, they thought that I was being, and I was being in a way, I wasn't faking. I wasn't giving anybody, uh, because they were sending me sometimes free items to review. I wasn't. Uh, what I did do was if, I, because a lot of these were young Chinese men and women who were sold a bill of goods in China that, hey, you can make money by selling stuff on Amazon in the United States. And all these young, and they, so they invested X amount of money and uh, listed products on Amazon. And these people were convinced. Now, when they contacted me, I never contacted them. I never contacted anybody and said, hey, send me a product ever. Uh, they would find me on the list uh, and there was some kind of a list over in China and uh, 
but if so, if, if, when, if they, when, and when they contacted me, if they said, you know, we want give us five stars, or uh, we have to do, you know, this, you know, of course, I just didn't even respond to them or answer them or whatever. So, but what I did do, and I'm sure, is if a product was something that I couldn't give five stars to because they were convinced you had it, which is, you know, mistaken. They were convinced that if they didn't have five stars, that they were going to be destroyed and, going to, you know, they're going to be out of business. They were going to be. So if the product was defective in some way or something was wrong, I'd contact them and say, you know, I cannot give you five stars. I, this is what I'm, I'd give you, four stars or whatever it would be. Do you want me to review your product or not? And I think in every case, every case, they said, no, no, no. Uh, please don't review it. And then I didn't review it. So, but, so, uh, so very rarely did somebody get, you know, people usually got, uh, but, so Amazon run their, either somebody reported me or they ran a thing and said, well, this guy should be giving 30% of the people four stars and 20% three stars, you know, whatever their, you know, coding did. And so they kicked, kicked me off. So now I can't, I can't even go, I couldn't go to these people's site. True, what I did with reviews that I did was things like, uh, I have, uh, which I purchased myself, I believe, an electronic, no, I think I purchased one myself and then a later, years later, whatever, electronic scale. And then a, a company contacted me and, and said, you know, hey, we'd like to send you, you know, an electronic scale and have you review it. And they sent it to me, it was excellent. And uh, so I reviewed it years and years ago. Well, about every year or so, the battery, of course, needs to be replaced in it. And what I did was then I would replace the battery and I would go find the review that I did on Amazon and I would update it with, hey, so the battery, you know, because you, you, I could, I'd go there and it would say, you know, tell me, I'd already changed it, you know, okay. Uh, the battery was just going to go, okay, the battery was just, and the battery was just, you know, uh, and I did other things like that. By the way, the first time I started reviewing something on uh, Amazon, it wasn't, nobody had ever sent me anything, or I never even thought of somebody sending me anything. I had gone to my doctor and he'd recommended a uh, support hose or whatever to force the blood up from my not that I get much blood in my legs or feet, but to do that. So I bought them and, uh, and then I went to Amazon and said, Hey, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, I have a complete heart block and a pacemaker and my cardiologist recommended that, you know, a support hose and I did it and blah, you know, they look like this. And I mean, it, I, seemed good and uh, and I posted the, you know and I, I'm sure they loved it. my doctor said you know anyway I got contacted by them and they said uh, send us your address and we're going to send you you know we appreciate the review you did we're going to send you some free uh, support pose and so then I started reviewing that's when I started reviewing you know things not actually not to get stuff for free at that point, it was just, I thought, hey, this is kind of, you know, there's communication going on. There's people reading this stuff and whatever. So I put a lot of work into it and then, uh, bang. Um, and now, well, like there's products that I have or things that I purchase that I would like to tell people, hey, man, this is a great product, you know, like from Amazon, stuff that I get from Amazon that I would like to uh, do, you know, this is a great product, well, I can't do it. Uh, so,
So I should do a video uh, somehow. Wouldn't be as funny. I made a video one time. I uh, worked hospital security for 30 plus years. And also during that time, I was a reserve police officer. I uh, uh, took an EMT course and completed it and got licensed by the state of Missouri as an EMT. Then the hospital that I worked at, uh, you know, ha hospitals have to have all their employees certified in uh, CPR. And so the hospital found out that I was an EMT or whatever and the security department uh, asked, you know, director of security what asked me to, to uh, do CPR for the hospital, be one of the people and they, so I was working with nurses as doing CPR and certifying nurses and the whole bit, you know, the whole bit. And, uh, um, I did that for years at the little hospital. I worked at the main big hospital for a time. Then I went to the little hospital and worked there. But no matter where I worked, I'd go down to well, the, at the little hospital. Then I, uh, along with a couple other nurses that were certified CPR instructors. And then at the main hospital, I went down and was certifying nurses and cardio techs and lab techs and everybody, you know, down there for years. And uh, then I went into that, I think, a little bit, and then I won't, I'm not going to go back into that. There was a nurse that was, uh, thought that, as a security officer, that I had got her into trouble. Actually, I hadn't. Uh, she thought that I reported her, which actually I did not. Uh, actually, she got reported by a couple of wives of uh, police officers or firemen. And she got reported by the head ER doctor that was in charge of, no, he wasn't in charge, he was a contractor. But he was the head ER doctor and he reported her. And I didn't. But then when she came and belligerent towards me, I didn't say, well, I didn't know about the two wives who had called and complained to the hospital at that point. But I did know that the head ER doctor had reported her and another nurse uh, because actually I told him I didn't think that it was his, you know, responsibility that there was a chain of command and uh, in the hospital and he wasn't in it. He was the head ER doctor in charge of the ER doctors and he had certain responsibilities when it came to, you know, so I had a little debate with him there in my office and, uh, but I knew then that he had reported her. And so, but anyway, when she comes to me and then she's, you know, I don't say, well, so-and-so reported you. And I also am not going to say if, if she's saying, you know, uh, your security and your report, I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, what security reports or doesn't report or what, you know, so I, I, you know, so anyway, she was out to get me looking to get me. And, uh, so, and she was <coughs> a CPR instructor. Uh, so I guess I am telling you a story. I was thinking it was about time for me to tell you a story. And I may have told you this story before or whatever, but, uh, oh, I know why. So hold that for me. Remind me. I'm, I wanted to tell you about, oh, yeah, a video that I made. How am I going to remember this? Did somebody remember? Uh, remind me. So, um, Anyway, we, uh, you know, we had to do CPR and when you have thousands of employees. We didn't have thousands at that small hospital, but actually the hospital that I worked for, they ended up owning eight, like 18 hospitals in Kansas City area. Uh, so at the small hospital, uh, 
we had to do CPR. It wasn't very many. <clears throat> so there was three of us doing it. But the main hospital sent out the person in charge of nursing and service. She was also a CPR cook. So she came out to help us. So that was four of us out there. And uh, so we were doing CPR. Uh, in, you know, instruction and certification because the nurses had to be certified. And uh, no, I got sidetracked because this is not the time that this nurse, well, anyway, so that nurse who's out to get me, oh, yeah, this did play into that. Yeah, okay, it does. I'm right. So we're doing CPR. And by the way, as we're doing CPR, there, uh, the other two nurses that were there were, or one of them was CPR nurse. No, I mean an ICU nurse. And as the ICU nurses are getting off after their 12 hour shift, you know, they come into the little room or whatever, and the CPR because we weren't doing it like a station. If we were doing it like a station, we were doing the whole thing. Sometimes you do one station, like I would work down at the main research hospital doing CPR. I might be doing infant CPR and people have to come to or might be doing, you know, uh, choking or whatever. But there it was just, so, you know, a couple ICU nurses come in and the ICU nurse says, you know, you're taken care of, go ahead, you know. No need to do this and everything, which is fine with me. Those were, you know, I mean, they shouldn't do it and I wouldn't do it, but they were, you know, ICU nurses, they did CPR all the, they did real CPR. I actually didn't do real CPR. Uh, so they, would, you know, so they went ahead and left. Um, so that, then the, other nurse who was ER and a couple of days a week, a couple of nights a week, she was ER nurse and then she did uh, something else there at the hospital for a, a one day or something, or two days a week or something, daytime or whatever. So she came in off duty to do this and uh, she came in in an extremely short skirt, very short and she came in braless and then she we had you know cpr mannequins we had everything we needed but she laid down on the floor and she'd called up firemen or whatever who i think were already certified but maybe one of them or two of them or three of them maybe they did need their certification uh anyway she laid down on the floor and uh, told the firemen or whatever, you know, uh, do compression, I don't know what, you know. And I was, oh my God, oh my God. And then uh, a little bit later when I f finished up or was doing whatever, and then I went down to the little office, actually it was a cafeteria, I think, where the head lady who was in charge of nursing education for the entire, you know, department ed actually, uh, in-service education or whatever. She was there like, everything okay? I forget what she, she didn't say, oh, you know, but I knew she had seen that upstairs and she was like, she couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, I had to come in that night for work my security officer job. And, uh, oh, I forgot the microphone is over here. I hope you can, oh no. Um, so I came in for, well, anyway, I thought, okay, I know how this is going down. I mean, I've worked uh, hospital security long enough and I know when I come in tonight, and sure enough, I, and I made up my mind what I was going to do. Um, so I, uh, I came in 
And the ER nurse says, oh, Jim, oh. And I said, I got to time in. So I go, we want to time in. So I come back, Jim, uh, we heard everybody's talking about that so-and-so was laying on the floor, braless, and uh, having the firemen, you know, whatever. And I said, uh, uh, I don't know. What, you, you were here, and, and it was just three or four of you. And I said, no, no I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Jim, you know, I said, I don't know anything. So for several days, people are coming up to me, you know, employees. Jim, oh, you know, you know, respiratory therapy, uh, tech, uh, lab tech, you know, whatever people coming up, and I, now I don't, I don't know anything, you know. So, uh, one or two nights a week for like two hours, there was like this is a small hospital. We didn't have security around the clock. There was just two of us, and. Uh, So, but we'd see each other at length, so we had to, I, I was on duty and I think he came in. And then I would stay either for an extra two hours and then he, you know, I would go home and then he would work the shift. And, uh, so he came in and I said, oh my God, Fletch, I got to tell you about this. I'm about to explode. Everybody, uh, you're not going to believe what happened. And then I told him that story. And I told him, you know, everybody asking me, everybody, you know, whatever. And I, and I said, of course, I'm not saying anything, you know, whatever. And then so a couple of days later, I I'm at, come in at work and I'm passing this nurse in the hallway. And she said... I'm sick and tired of you talking about me behind my back and whatever. And I said, her name, I said, I, I haven't said anything. I haven't talked to anybody about anything. And she said, you did too. And I said, I did not. And then she said, you said, and then she quoted me exactly the exact, and he was the only person I talked to, the exact thing that I said to, <laughs> to Jim. And uh, so, later on she ended up reporting me. Okay, that's the story I wanted to get into. So then she ended up reporting me for certify. oh, for certifying a nurse without using the mannequin. Now remember, you know, the, but I, did I, you know, so, I mean, I could have said, well, you, and I don't remember actually seeing her do it, but she would have, of course. And I, I could have, but I wouldn't, I never do those. I never did those kind of things. I just said, uh, you know, yeah, I did. This nurse needed to be certified uh, because she came in at 6 p.m. and she was had been on vacation. And at midnight, there was a directive on the bulletin board around the hospital, any nurse on such and such a date, which would have been beginning at midnight that night, who is not CPR certified, cannot work. And so Penny said, oh, Jim, I'm not, you know. And I said, okay, uh, I don't have a mannequin out here. And I said, but uh, we'll, we'll go through everything, you know, and uh, I'll give you, you know, your card, and then here's what I want you to do. I said, uh, when I get, I'll order a mannequin out, when it comes out, then we'll run through the mannequin part. And I told her, I said, Sharon, that was a, I said, now you're going to run into Sharon, you know, and Sharon's going to say, oh, Penny, you need to get, you know, we need to get you certified or whatever. And I said, Penny, do not say. I don't need to because Jim took care of it for me. I said, don't do that, Penny, because I knew Penny really well. And Penny was a great lady, had a wonderful husband, fantastic kids, a whole bunch of them, young, born-again Christian, uh, whole thing, you know. But I think at home, 
her husband, and she was in favor, you know, her husband being the God's representative in the family or whatever, she had to, uh, and she did it, I think, gladly. She had to just be like a second class. But then when she was at work, she was, you know, and, uh, and then she kind of liked drama or a confrontation or something rather. So I knew and I told her, you know, and then what does she do in the morning? Of course, uh, Sharon comes and says, oh, you know, Penny, you got to get you certified or whatever. And she said, oh, Jim, you know, and then Sharon reported me uh, to security and <coughs> supervisor comes out, you know, and says, Jim, and I said, yep, I did. I certified uh, without, uh, you know, using the mannequin because, you know, she had to be certified and whatever. And that's, and that, now I never said to him, hey, CPR instructors, they do that. I never did. But CPR instructors, they, you know, sometimes will certify somebody or whatever. I didn't ever said that. Uh, I wouldn't do that because, anyway, I just never did that kind of stuff. No matter what it was in my entire 30 years of hospital security. Uh, a lot of times I got attacked or for something that I didn't do that somebody else did, but I took the responsibility, you know, for stuff like that. But anyway, so he comes out and he said, I said yep, I did it. So then I get uh, called down to the main hospital, the director of security, uh, uh, suspends me for three days without pay and uh, and also then it tells me, of course, that the American Red Cross had uh, said I could no longer be a CPR instructor. And uh, so, now when I went back to the hospital, well, I went back that day and I wasn't suspended for that because they needed me that night. I went in and the nurses, when they found out, they wanted to do petitions and all that. I said, no, 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 nope. I violated the rules. The One of the bad things about it was, which I knew and that accepted was, that I got written up for falsification of hospital documents or whatever. That stays on your record permanently. Uh, if I'd have probably punched somebody out, <laughs> you know, I'd have been fired probably, but uh, that would have gone off my, if I'd have stole something, you know, out of the cafeteria or something, that would have after some period probably have left my record or whatever, but falsification of hospital documents because to the hospital, that's really serious. And to the hospital, that'd be like a nurse, you know, writing down that, she gave narcotics to somebody when she didn't give narcotics to somebody or whatever. So that's, that, but anyway, I accepted that. And I didn't let the nurses do, the ER doctors too wanted to, you know, do a petition. I said, no, nope, no. Nope. So I took my three days off. Okay, now I do remember the thing I wanted to tell you about. Uh, and I, you'll never find it, but to some place back, there's a long time ago, uh, I made a YouTube video and in the YouTube video I told, well not with all that junk in it, but I told that, uh, that I was a CPR instructor and that uh, I certified somebody without using the uh, mannequin didn't go into all the detail that I just went into for here. How long is this damn video going to be? Jim, for Christ's sake, stop. Uh, so, anyway, I made a YouTube video and I said, oh, it was really humiliating. Uh, all the CPR instructors, they, they lined up, they made two rolls. And then they had me at the end, and they took my my 
training baton, my pointer, and they broke it. And then they ripped my CPR patches off my uniform. This is from like I think a John Wayne movie or something, 1940 or whatever. When, uh, they ripped my pat when a military officer was in a. They ripped my patches off or whatever. And then I said, I walked, had to walk between these, this ro these rows of, and as I walked, each one of the instructors turned their back to me. And then that was, that was my story. And this <laughs> YouTube lady, viewer, you know, this uh, viewer, my YouTube video, she left the thing. Oh my God, oh my God. When I read that, uh, I cried. How could they, how could they possibly do that to you? Oh, that was so cruel. So I had to leave a thing saying, oh, I was just having some fun. Just kidding, they didn't do that, didn't happen. What did happen was there, they needed a CPR instructor at, at that small hospital. So, you know, when they had defrocked, defrocked me. And so, guess who the hospital assistant administrator who was a head nurse. She was a nursing, well, she was, a, they had the hospital administrator, then they had the assistant administrator, and she was, you know, an RN, and she was in charge of the nurses and uh, stuff like that. A lady who did not like, I don't think she liked men, but I don't know about that for sure. I know she did not like police officers. I know she didn't like security officers. And boy, I knew, I know she did not like me. Uh, and I might've gone into that story. But she called, who did she call up? Penny, the nurse that I certified, you know, and got into trouble for. And, uh, she calls her up to the office and says, Penny, I want you to be, we need a CPR instructor out here and I want you to go to the certification class to be a CPR instructor. And Penny told her, hell no, I'm not doing it. How dare you, you know, do such and such to Jim and whatever. And then she, then she came down. They called up several other nurses or maybe the head nurse might have, you know, the nurse, she might have gone to them and asked them, and they said, no, not doing it. So finally, a, a real nice nurse, she young and, uh, I don't think she had the courage to, you know, to turn it down. And, uh, because she was like, uh, nursing supervisor, she came in and then she worked over a few hours on and when there wasn't any, uh, when the hospital was kind of shorthanded and they needed nurses, so she she, were, she was great, really nice. I liked her. I think I might have told you about the time that I didn't like her. <laughs> but, uh, so she agreed to do it and then she, uh, because the reason she did it was because that's the way she was. Like she was, I think just about every night that she was in charge, if anything came up at all, she would call at home the assistant, you know, uh, uh, administrator, the nurse or whatever, you know, she'd call at home and say, what should I do? And that's the kind of person she was. I've worked around several people like that, even one in security that was a supervisor who would call every night the, at home the, and the director of security liked it. Uh, he would call the director, what should I do about this? What should, and I thought, you know, that's because like I worked at one hospital and I was, uh, second shift supervisor for years and I was day shift supervisor for years for a while. I was 
supervisor over all three, you know, shifts for a while. And this that supervisor had had a heart attack, was out for three months and stuff like that. I never, ever called the director of security at home in all that time. And then when I was acting in his place, well, there was times when the director of security was laid up in the hospital. There was times when he was on vacation or whatever, then I was acting director of security. And I never, ever in years ever called him, at, you know, anybody at home and said, what should I do? I just did, and when I was acting director of security, there was a few times when the security officers would call me and say, oh, Jim, you don't call me at home. Uh, Jim, this came up and we were, and I, and I would say, uh, Chuck, how do you think you should handle this? And he would say, and I say, that sounds good to me. Do it, do it the way you think, you know, to do it the way you think. But, uh, so anyway, that, uh, and I got sidetracked again. What was I getting? Anyway, this would call her at home. Oh, that was it. Man, my brain is working a little bit. Uh, and so she took the job. But she had to go be certified as a CPR instructor, which I think we, you, uh, I think it took one day, I think, eight hours. And if you do CPR for eight hours, you know, you're doing the, you know, even though we weren't actually doing it in order to be certified as a CPR instructor. And I think it was a just one eight hour thing. And of course with the machine, we had mannequins that were hooked up to a computer, you know, even then. Hooked up, we would show if we were doing the compressions in the correct time, placement, all that type of stuff. And at that time you did breathing. Also now you don't do breathing. Uh, but so she had to go uh, down and get certified as a CPR instructor. She did. Then they just happened to American Heart Association just happened to have. I don't know if it was their national uh, American Heart Association meeting dealing with CPR or if it was like a regional meeting, but it was like at the municipal auditorium or something like that. And you've got, and so this uh, nurse who's now taken over being the CPR instructor because to replace me, she comes back and she says, oh, Jim, she said, you're not gonna believe this. The president of the American Heart Association or whatever, is up there before an auditorium filled with hundreds, I guess, of CPR instructors. And he, and he says, uh, you know, we all know that, you know, sometimes we certify somebody without having them do everything they need to do or without using the mannequin or without doing this or whatever, you know, we, but we should not do that. We should, you know, always, but we, I know, you know, we know that you do that sometimes and whatever. And, and uh, Barbie, that was her name. She said, I couldn't believe, you know, you got three days suspension without pay and all that type of stuff. And here, and you know, they revoked your uh, being a CPR instructor or whatever. And here's the head of the American Heart Association telling, admitting, you know, in this auditorium that we all do it. So, so that was story time. I got a lot of more, I, a lot, I have a lot of more, well, got a lot of story. Sometimes I think of them and I think, hey, I should tell. But that's one problem I have is I don't, I need some kind of an index to remember what I did tell. I know I told about the shooting of Dan Stegall and, and the killing of uh, John Gallegas 
at St. Joe Hospital. Um, I know I told some of the how I fought racism at Trinity Lutheran Hospital and was eventually fired for uh, by the director of security for opposing his racism. I know I told, I didn't tell all the stories. I couldn't tell all the racist things that, uh, all the times I fought racism there. I think I, and I also did tell you the story about when I did get fired and then I ended up, although I had a job immediately, I still appealed it uh, and went to the Missouri, you know, uh, unemployment, whatever type of hearing it was. And I remember, I, I told you that story while there was the arbitrator, or not arbitrator, what would we call, anyway, the guy in charge of the thing, just him. No secretary taking, you know, uh, notes or anything, just him. And I showed up and he said, uh, is Trinity Lutheran Hospital gonna send somebody? I said, I don't think they'll send somebody for something like this. And then down the hall comes uh, the Director of Human Resources, a, a great man, by the way, a fair man uh, from Trinity. And anyway, I was surprised that, you know, he showed up. But my God, and yeah, I did mention this because I remember mention, mentioning, you know, my God, I wish, I, yeah. well, of course they wouldn't have allowed it. Uh, I wish that could have been video make a, I wish I could have been a YouTube video because, oh, I was, my brain was working. I was articulate. I was, uh, I didn't need to be. I did tell that story. But I would have, oh, that was great. And too, the way it worked was, of course, I, I, I always tell the truth, but, uh, the way it worked was I was not under oath, but the other guy, the director, the other person from the, the company, the director of human resources, was sworn to tell the truth or whatever. And, uh, and I got to cross-examine him or whatever. And like I said, he was a great guy. I did four grievances at Trinity Lutheran Hospital. And of course I was right, or I wouldn't have done a grievance. And I didn't ask for any, I, yeah, I did talk about this. I never asked for anything. You know, I didn't say, I want the director of security fired because of his racism, or I want, you know, I want a $10 pay raise, or I never, it was never anything like that. It was always, I asked for something reasonable. And uh, I found out later, well, I knew that the director of human resources agreed from the very beginning that I was correct and that, you know, and uh, I found out later when I went, when I knew I was going to be fired, I actually wanted to be fired because I just actually, I liked the director of security, the racist <laughs> Archie Bunker or whatever, I actually liked him because also I have always I understand people are not perfect and people are products of their, you know, but uh, uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take him anymore. And I knew that he was going to fire me the first chance he got. And it's if you're a security officer or a police officer or a certain, you know, certain job, probably every job, you know, it's easy for somebody to eventually find something. But, uh, oh, I found out that I, uh, uh, I, I, so I knew I was going to be fired. So I went to the personnel department and I, human, human resources department, and I said, I'd like to exercise my right to look at my personnel file to see what's in my personnel file. Uh, I think the director of personnel was Vernon Johnson, I believe, but I might be wrong. I knew his name and I, I think, anyway, he said, well, Jim, you know, one of us will have to sit with you. I said, well, I, that's no problem. I'm not going to take anything out or, 
do anything. I just wanted to look, you know. And so I flipped it open. There wasn't very much in it. There wasn't anything in there that I didn't know. That was, I, that surprised me. There was, I mean, there wasn't anything except four things. When I did my four grievances, one step was meeting with the, you know, and, but what I never saw was his written recommend, what his findings were and his recommendations. And he support, and, he, and all four of them, he said, you know, Mr. Howard is, is correct. And I had talked and I told Mr. Ross, the director of security and safety that, that Jim was correct and that he was wrong and that he had to change his policy. He had to do this or do that or whatever. And it would say, uh, the, you know, the director of security, you know, Mr. Ross refused to, which I couldn't, you know, which I knew that. I knew that he had been told that he couldn't do it. And because he'd tell me, Mr. Johnson, the director of Jim, I, you know, I told Mr. Ross that you're correct and that he can't have this policy. Like one was a policy that if you miss, if you're sick at all, if you if you miss one day's work, that you have to bring in a doctor's excuse. And he said, I explained to him that's not hospital. I explained to him that just because you guys are in uniform, just because you're carrying weapons, does he can't those that the hospital rules and regulations apply to everybody, including you guys. And he says he won't listen to me. So of course it went to administration, you know, the next step. And then administration, uh, the assistant uh, administrator of the hospital had to sit in the director of security's office with the director of security. And then when I came in, then also the human resources came in and Mr. Ross had to say, I am rescinding this policy. And, you know, blood vessels were, you know, he was, he was enraged, but he had to sit there and say, and, you know, Jim, uh, go ahead and put this on the, you know, thing saying that, take down the other one and put this up, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, I got a lot of stories and I want to pass them on to you. A few years ago, and I think I might have talked about this, I talked about, you know, I wanted them to rec be recorded. Not that my life is any, I just wanted them to be recorded. And not that, not that I've done anything worthwhile uh, in life. Uh, but, um, but then, you know, and, and I, I thought, back then I thought a few years ago, I was thinking, well, it'll be recorded and maybe in 20 years or 50 years, uh, somebody will pull up that data and they'll be surprised or wonder or, or something, to, you know, sort of like it would be preserved somehow. Not that they're going to uh, put up a statue of me or or say that I was an exemplary person or anything like that. I just wanted it kind of, re, you know, recorded uh, for the record. I don't think I ever, this is flashing. Is there a timeout on uh, this of two hours or something? Have I gone two hours? Uh-oh. I seem to think there is a two hour limit. I may have gone two hours. If I'm gone. Yeah, this thing is flashing. I wonder if I can, let's see. Oh, but anyway, I've decided, I'm not sure that this is gonna, anything will last. How long have I been going? I wanted to talk about something Totally. Well, you can see over here on the right what I wanted. But that was my intention. Uh, no, it's only coming up on 
one hour. Maybe that's been flashing all the time. But I do seem to remember that uh, let's see here. Maybe I should stop and make a new video. Because this is exactly like one hour. And uh, yeah, I think I should. Stop and uh, the only problem is I'm not going to remember what this video was about. Was it about anything? Uh, oh my God. Uh, 3.7 gigabyte file. And I think this is file is going to be 4K. But I think I'll uh, not save it as a 4K video. I think I'll save it as a 1080 video. No reason to see this in 4K. Okay, I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. Now, what do I want you to do? Uh, I'll put some links below. Please use them, like use the Amazon link if you go there. Uh, and then you don't have to purchase the things you see that I have listed. But if you go there, you log in from that link, and you go and buy something else, I'll get a commission. Uh, I'm getting close, I think, uh, to 3,000 subscribers. I think I'm up to 2,700 or whatever. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please uh, subscribe. I'd like to have 3,000 subscribers. And I do thank you very much for watching. I wonder here if we do a panning shot, what will we see here? You'll see I'm using my 4K monitor. There's my refrigerator over there. Way over there. Here's my one BBS con. I went in uh, 1993. See that chair? See, there's always something on that chair. So when I get these boxes over here filled, these containers, not that little tiny container, but the big white container, containers. Okay, I guess that's, guess that's it. I gotta tell you about the one BBS con sometime. Oh man, I need to shave. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.